Shalom. One. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And today we're going to go into Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, uh, which in the uh, 32nd chapter, you know, is really the Lord via the prophet Ezekiel. Um, you know, pronouncing judgment in the form of a lamentation against Egypt. And so in this time, or at least in this chapter, it's going more so back to the focus going back to Israel. So this is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord Yahweh came on to me, saying, Son of man. And and also as we read through this chapter, it highlights the importance of <clears throat> of a, a watchman or a prophet's job. Okay, and why it is that the prophets have to have to go out there and, and, and give the warning. Okay, they, the, the, the second you've been made, you know, the second the Lord ordains you as one, you don't really have a choice. Okay, this is your duty. That's why the, the headline here says the watchman's duty. <coughs> Again, the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came on to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. And say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, children of the people being Israelites, uh, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. So, you know, if, if, if obviously whenever you had certain cities, you know, you would have. Um, like Jerusalem, for example, was like a fortress city, right? So you would have high walls, even like Jericho, and you would have watchmen upon the walls to whose job it was to look out. You know, like today you have buildings that have security cameras that do that job. And they sort of alert, set, in, set off an alarm, you know, if something like this goes on, if a, a perceived threat is coming. In the ancient world, they had watchmen, and the watchmen had trumpets, which these trumpets were typically in the form of a ram's horn. And with the ram's horn, you'll notice there's, because this is pretty much what it looks like, a ram's horn. Right, so you can see that with the ram's horn, it's, it's an actual horn of a ram, but it's um, prepared in such a way that it can be used as a alarm or a trumpet or a sound. And you can see how there are different shapes okay of these ram's horns which it's not always that you may have a ram's a ram's actual horn that comes in this shape but what they would be able to do is um by heating up the the actual ram's horn it would become soft enough you know they would boil it and it would become soft enough to where they could then shape it you know in certain different shapes and i'm sure that that also affected the sound but a ram's horn gave a very distinct and unique sound so it was very easy to identify or you know pick up when when a you know when an alarm was going off you wouldn't confuse it with just a regular sound so as it says here when when you see if the sword come upon the land which when the lord says he's going to bring a sword usually he's referring to like a, a enemy nation that's going to come come against whatever you know the land he blow the trumpet and warned the people. And then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So if you hear the alarm, because you would use the trumpet to either like call a gathering, make an announcement, or make an uh, or sound an alarm. There were different uh, different ways that they would blow the trumpet, be it maybe you know, different amount of times they would blow the trumpet or different ways that they would blow it to um, to indicate whether it's you know warning or something else. So here the Lord is saying, well, if you have a watchman that's sounding the alarm of danger and you hear the alarm, but you don't do anything about it, then when the sword comes, when the judgment, the danger comes and you die in it, your blood is on your own head, meaning that nobody's at fault for your death. <clears throat> verse 5 he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning yeah so you you heard the alarm but you didn't take heed to it 
his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. So you hear the alarm, you run, or you you know you you, you take action based on that, and you can survive. Now, the uh, the modern day equivalence of this is us giving the warning. Now, the way we're doing this is not by actually blowing a ram's horn, but it's by telling you constantly through these videos the the, the danger that's coming. Okay, the, the things that are coming ahead that are going to be, you know, uh, detrimental to you. But majority of people today are likened onto the those that hear the sound of the trumpet because they hear us speaking. They see the videos, but they don't take heed. They're not taking warning. So when the actual chaos, when the famines and the destruction and the, the martial law and all the dangers that we've been warning about come to pass, if you get caught up in that, it's going to be on you. Okay, we we have done our job. But for those that listen and stop and say, yo, you know what? That's let me let me let me see what's going on there. What can I do to avoid this? And, and really, it's the elect are the ones that are going to do that. But those that do that, as it says here, they, they shall deliver their soul. Verse six. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them when it says take it means to kill he is he is taken away in his iniquity but his blood will i require at the watchman's hand so this is why a watchman's job is very important and they have to sound the alarm so like today we we have to do these lessons because if we don't we're not giving you the warning. And if we don't give you the warning, because at the end of the day, even though it may manifest in the form of these uh, rich, you know, banking families or these non-governmental organizations uh, setting up different plans to bring chaos to the world so that they can implement their new world order, even though it may manifest that way, ultimately behind the scenes, the one that's bringing this these calamities these dangers is the most high he's just using them as you know the puppets to, to bring about this this time of, of uh, danger this this sword so to speak okay so that's why we have to give the warning and we always tie it back to the scriptures because this is where this is the, the source okay and if we don't if we don't warn you that the Lord is gonna bring this using these people or using this method or so on and so forth and when it comes to pass you're going to get caught up in it and those that get caught up in it it's going to be like it says he is taken away in his iniquity because if you get caught up in it then that's judgment that the lord brought upon you but the lord is going to require that blood at the hands of the watchman saying i gave you the knowledge to know what to look out for not for fun but so you could warn these people and you didn't warn them and guess what now they got taken so that's on you now you got to pay for that and that's why as a watchman you don't want to be in that position you have to be diligent you have to be constantly warning verse 7 so thou so thou O son of man i have met, i have set thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me you see and that lines up with isaiah 62 and 6 right i have set watchmen upon thy walls so when the lord said this to ezekiel he said he set him as a watchman onto the house of israel and in isaiah the saying here i have set watchmen plural so what manner of individual was ezekiel that the lord set him as a watchman he was a prophet and that's why the, and, and the Lord, the ultimate watchmen of the house of Israel are the prophets, because they are the ones who hear the word at the hear the word at the mouth of the Lord via the scriptures, via the Holy Spirit. And a precept for that is Amos chapter three, verse seven. OK, so these watchmen here are ultimately really the prophets. So I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Okay. So as 
as a watchman or as a prophet, you have to abide by these regulations, these rules. It's your duty. Um, all right, it says here, verse 8, When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. His iniquity meaning like his sins. Now, how does the Lord say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die? By way of, of, of these laws, statutes, and commandments in the scriptures. Meaning the Lord has the instructions in there to tell you those that commit this kind of abomination shall be put to death or they're gonna you know they're going they're going to perish when you see somebody doing that or violating that law the lord has declared it in the book that anybody that violates that law is going to die okay so when you see somebody violating that law that's that's by, that's how the lord is telling the wicked that they're going to die by having having it written in the book that if you go and do x y and z this is the consequence now for us that know and understand what that means and are able to translate it to the people if you see somebody doing something that the lord has deemed um, a deadly action an abomination in the scriptures and you don't warn this person then they're gonna die because they're doing this this wickedness that that the lord has has already you know deemed a an abomination but because you knew and you didn't warn them, the blood is going to be required at your hands. That's why we keep telling people to repent and turn back to the Heavenly Father, because if not, you're going to die. And that's what's in the scriptures. Verse 9, Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked to, uh, of his way to turn from it. Now, when it talks about the wicked in these verses, these are wicked Israelites. Okay? These are wicked Israelites. This isn't dealing with with the wicked as an Esau Edom because he ain't gonna he ain't gonna he ain't gonna uh, uh, turn uh, anyway. As the scriptures say, they're like the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. So it's verse nine. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So there's like the three cases, right? Number one, you see this person doing wickedness, you don't warn them. Number two, you see this person doing wickedness, you warn them, but they don't they don't take heed to your words. And number three, you see them doing wickedness, you warn them, but they do take heed to your words. Verse 9 again, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from, from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. You've done your job. Verse 10. Therefore, O uh, old thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. And also, this is why like, we, we, we try to make it as clear as possible that our job is not to make you believe what we are saying. Our job is not to, 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 to save you. We can't do that. Our job is simply to give the warning, to give the message. Whether you take heed or not, is going to result in what your outcome is going to be. But we're good. We're in the clear by just giving you the message. So we don't need to spend 20, 30, you know, years trying to convince a specific individual that this is the truth. And no, no, no. Our job is just to warn you, hey, what you're doing, if you keep doing that, this is what's coming and you're, you're, you're going to get caught up in it. That's it. Once you do that, you're done. You're good. Whether they listen or they say, yeah, you crazy, I don't care about that, I don't believe that. Cool. That's fine. My job wasn't to make you believe it. My job was just to make you aware of it. Verse 10. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus, thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? So the Lord is telling Ezekiel to tell the house of Israel, saying, this is what you guys are saying. You, you guys are saying that your transgressions, your sins are upon you, and you're basically dying. You know, how are you going to live? 
Verse 11, say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. So the Lord is saying, I would rather somebody that's a wicked Israelite repent so that they can live. I, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't set out to just, you know, want to just make you all wicked just to kill you all. But there is a penalty for being wicked and that's not going to be uh, abated just because for, you know, for no reason. No, you need to repent. There's a judgment for the wicked. If you continue in wickedness, you'll face that judgment. Anyway, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? So you're saying, how then should we live? We know all our sins are upon us. And the Lord is saying, well, stop sinning. <laughs> you want to know how to live? Stop sinning. Turn back. Stop doing your wickedness. And then you'll live. Don't complain about suffering and dying. And then you're continuing to do the things that are going to lead you to do that or lead you to death. You know, when you, it's interesting because when you look around, especially today, because it's the same, the same Israelites doing the same thing today. They're just called by different modern names, right? But you look at, you know, our people complain about the condition they're in and how the, the suffering and, you know, dying and so on and so forth. And, and yet when you tell them, okay, well, this is the reason why you're going through that. And if you stop doing this, this, and that, then you'll stop suffering this this and that but they don't want to do that you, it's like crying that you're, you're 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 burning but you don't want to take your hand out the fire verse 11 or actually verse 12 therefore thou son of man say unto the children of thy people and and those are israelites right because ezekiel was an israelite so his people would be israelites and their children as well the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. And this is a very important thing to note that the Lord is saying here in, in these verses. The Lord is telling you how he, basically how he judges, okay? Which is that the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. So, and as we're going to keep on reading, it'll tell you, don't count on the fact that you've been doing all these righteous works for X amount of years. So even if you do go off, you're going to be you're going to be covered for because of the righteous things you've done in the past. That's not how it works. OK, and in the sense that, like, you may think, oh, well, I've been doing I've been doing good so far. It, it, it won't hurt if I do just just this one thing real quick. No, 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 no. The Lord is saying, don't, don't even, don't, don't do it. Ah, uh ah, -uh, uh -uh, don't move, don't move, don't do it. Yeah, uh, so it says here, the righteous of the, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. You see, so ultimately, if you are you know, you were somebody that was doing wickedness, but you, you, you repent, you turn away from that, then the Lord is going to have mercy on you. I mean, ultimately it's up to him, but you know, as it says here, you're not going to, you know, fall by those, by those wicked acts you did because you've repented now. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. Of course, when you deal with for example, the elect and, 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 and all of that, there are there are factors that play into that. But when you just look at this on a, on a very base level, on a, a black and white scale, this is what the Lord is saying. You do right, you do right, you do right, and you decide to start doing wrong, you're going to pay. Right? Like, like, for example, even if you go back, like this is just a basic example, but if you look at Adam, Adam was made perfect, right? At least he was made right in the beginning but what happened when adam disobeyed and he transgressed he paid for that the lord didn't say oh well because for all these years up until now you've been doing right i'm gonna i'm gonna overlook this no all right and same thing with uh the apostle paul for example 
he was persecuting the church, consenting onto the death of the saints, of the 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 the, the, the followers of Yahushai. But when the Lord came to him and knocked him off that horse and turned him to the right path, the Lord didn't say, I mean, even when the Lord went to Ananias in a dream and told him, go and heal Saul or Paul, as his name got changed to be, he was hesitant. Wait, tell me, wasn't this the guy that was persecuting us? But the Lord didn't say, well, because he did all those things, you know what? Eh, I'm not going to give him this chance. No. Right, that's just this just a basic example, but um verse uh continuing, neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. So you want to be very, very careful of that. You know, don't 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 this isn't like um like uh like how a bank works, for example, like okay, well, every righteous act I do is like depositing ten dollars into my account, and every wicked act I do is like withdrawing ten dollars from my account. So if I've done three righteous acts, I have $30 in the account. If I do one wicked act today, all it's gonna do is take me back to 20. But I'll still be all right because I'll still have some money in the bank. No, <laughs> no. You 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 do righteous acts, you can have a million dollars in your account and you decide. Okay, there's a difference between falling, you know, repenting. That's, that's, that's you know, that's different. But if you decide, oh, well, I've done all this righteous stuff, I'm good. Let me just take a quick step in wickedness real quick. Your bank account is going to be closed and you're going to be thrown on, under the prison. So you don't want to tempt the hand of the Lord. Verse 13. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he committed, he shall die for it. See, and that's the, that's the part right there. If he trusts to his own righteousness to think that, oh, uh, I've been, the Lord has been good to me. I've been doing good for so and so long. And he'll overlook this, even if I do go ahead and commit this adult, adulterous act or, you know, this, this wicked act right here. Uh, Lord, I've done a lot of good stuff. I'm on the Lord's good side. He likes me, so he'll let it slide. This is what it means when the Lord says he's not a respecter of persons. He's not going to look at you and say, oh, because you're such and such, like today, right? you have these these um, individuals in high positions that commit very heinous acts but they get off because of who they are or or what they're known for i mean that's not righteous judgment verse 14 again when i say unto the wicked he shall surely die or thou shall surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right if the wicked restore the pledge which when you restore the pledge, it's like the it's basically um, like returning the security. You know, if somebody that's in debt to you, you know, they, they give you something and then you lend them something, you gotta restore that 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 thing, that security they gave you. Especially if they if they were somebody that was in need, whatever they would give you would, would be something they needed. Like in the scriptures it tells you that there are certain things that you can't even um, either you can't you can't accept those as a pledge or you can't hold those past sundown especially if it was something that was needed for this person's survival so and it, it would be a wicked act for you to hold on to that pledge and that's why it, it's saying here like if the wicked was to restore the pledge give again that he had robbed walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity he shall surely live he shall not die so basically if he was to turn away from these wicked things and it's not limited to just these things that are mentioned here, right? But if he was to turn away from these wicked acts, then he would live. The Lord would have mercy on him. It's called repentance. Verse 16, none of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, the way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. So what the Lord is saying here is, listen, I'm going to judge you according to what you do, according to your works. Verse 20, yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. He's not fair. 
O ye house of Israel, I will judge every, I will judge you every one after his ways. Whatever judgment comes upon you, it's based on what you did. All right, I was watching this uh, show and there was this uh, this scene where this this individual had had bribed the you know let's just call them the judges to basically move in a certain manner and when he wanted them to later on do something for him in his favor they were a little reluctant and he basically brought up the fact that well how how would it fare for them if news or word got out that they had taken bribes you know or taken money to do x y and z so he was basically blackmailing them at that point and you know as they were looking what he said was see it wasn't i'm not the one who did this to you but obviously he's the one who, who gave them the money but he's saying it wasn't me who put you in this position it was your own greed that put you in this position and to an extent you know he was right because all he did was really set the trap all he did was really lay the temptation if they hadn't taken the money then they wouldn't have ended up in that position so to an extent, he did have a point, right? The temptation is there, but it comes with judgment. But it's also that, that that judgment is triggered by your reaction to the temptation. You know, so if they the dude came to you with some bribe money and you're like, she, if you take it, then you're basically you're basically, you know, accepting the terms and conditions, which is a case like blackmail. Anyway, uh, but that's the, the whole point here is the Lord saying, I would judge every one of you after his way. So when if, if the judgment comes upon you, it, it'll be based on your actions. Verse 21, and it came to pass in the 12th year of our captivity in the 10th month, because remember, Ezekiel was a captive here in, in, uh, in Babylon, right? In the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came on to me saying the city is smitten right so the uh, this was basically somebody that had, that had survived what what the the siege that that came to jerusalem right and as we keep on reading now the hand of the lord yahweh was upon me in the evening a four meaning before he that was escaped came and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning and my mouth was opened, and I was no more dumb. Now, remember, as we read in the, in the beginning, the preceding chapters, how the Lord said he would make Ezekiel dumb, not to be a reprover unto the people, until this, um, this, this one that was escaped would come and give him word about what the Lord was, was going to do or what the Lord had done to Jerusalem. Now, the specifics of how the Lord made Ezekiel dumb, you know, it doesn't specify, like, you know, be it maybe... The Lord just had it to where he wasn't free, you know, to, to, to speak freely to the people except for when the, the word of the Lord will come upon him or however it is. OK, but there had to be at least some, you know, some limitation on what he was, what he could say. But anyway, uh, when we go to the book of Ezekiel 24 and 25, it reads, Also, thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory? The desire of their eyes and that whereupon they set their minds their sons and their daughters so what the lord was saying here is when he takes away the the their strength and the joy of their glory that's by bringing judgment on jerusalem by destroying uh, the temple and the city and you know their family members and loved ones they the they here is talking about these captives right so the lord is saying here while they were uh, held captive in Jerusalem or in, in Babylon, you know, they would think upon Jerusalem and, 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 and you know, the, the, the temple and their some of their family members that were left over there and all of that. And the Lord is saying, when I take that away, right, continuing in verse 26, that he that escapeth in that day shall come on to thee. So the Lord told Ezekiel ahead of time here that there was going to be uh, somebody that escapes that destruction in Jerusalem. And he would come here, right, on to, to Ezekiel. It says, to cause thee to hear it with thine with thine ears. So the Lord is saying, um, 
when I bring that destruction upon Jerusalem, I'm going to cause somebody to come and, and give you word. Verse 27, In that day shall thy mouth be opened to him which is escaped, and thou shalt speak, and be no more dumb, and thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So when we go back to Ezekiel 33, that's what's happening here. Okay, as we read 33 and 21 again, and it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me. Now actually, if we go and look at, um, let's say Ezekiel, uh, prophet see what it tells us about Ezekiel and then let's also look up the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem so if we look at Ezekiel here I think there might be something it should give us some timelines here all right so it says here Ezekiel's 30th year is given as the fifth year of exile of Judah's king Jehoiakim by the Babylonians, counting the years after the exile in 598 BCE, um, that is from 597 to 593. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, let's do this. When was Ezekiel exiled? Okay, so they say here Ezekiel was carried as a captive to, to Babylon approximately 597 BC. And when we look here at um, the siege of Jerusalem, they put that at approximately 587 BC. So that's roughly about um, 10 years or so, right? From like 597 that Ezekiel was taken captive to about like 587 here, which they say was the siege of Jerusalem. Um, and they, they place it here at about 589 or 587 BC but even if say we, we dated it at like 587 remember that a siege wasn't a one-year thing like when we read it here it says it was a 30 month siege right so that's that's like a good two plus years two years and some change right if, if we cut a year is 12 months two uh two years about 24 months that's about two years and maybe what uh six six months so when you that that lines up with what Ezekiel is saying here, right? If if he was taken captive at about 597, and the siege, if we place the siege at 587, that's 10 years, and if the siege lasted a little over two years, that's about 12 years and some change. Okay, as we're reading here, he says in the 12th year of his captivity, in the 10th month, right, in the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came on to me, saying, "The city is smitten." Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening afore, yeah, I think I read all this part again, but anyway, I read it again. Um, afore he that was escaped came and he opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning and my mouth was opened and I was no more dumb. Then the word of the Lord came on to me saying, son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land, but we are many. The land is given us for inheritance. So when you actually, you know, basically Israel that were in the land came up with many different, um, you know, like, like basically false hopes to try and, try and uh, 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 remain in denial against the, the words that the prophets were, were saying against them, the judgments that the prophets were saying. So here they were saying, well, this land was promised to Abraham, our forefather, and he inherited it. And now us being his descendants, this is our inheritance. This is land that was promised to us. So pretty much there's no way that we're going to lose this land. Okay, the Lord ain't going to take this from us because he, he promised it to us as an inheritance. And this is what the Lord says in, in, in reply, right? Verse 25, wherefore say unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Ye eat with the blood and lift up your eyes towards your idols. Eating with the blood meaning they eat, they eat, you know, meat with blood in it, which the scriptures tell you you're not supposed to eat that. Um, so all those medium rares and, 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 and uh, 
what they call those steak tartare things, uh, whatever. That, when the, the food got blood in there, you ain't supposed to do that. All right. Um, it says, and lift up your eyes towards your idols, meaning the, the idol worship, they worship idols, and shed blood. And shall ye possess the land? You're talking about inheritance, inheritance. Look at all the things you're doing in the land. And you expect to continue to, to, to remain in the land, to possess it? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife. And shall ye possess the land? So you 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 committed murder, you doing all these abominable acts, you defiling your neighbor's wife means you're committing adultery, you're you're, you're sleeping with another man's woman. Right? And you expect to, to possess the land? Did you forget the stipulations of remaining in the land? The Lord let it be known, right, that, hey, I'm going to bring you into this land, but you got to follow these laws, statutes, and commandments. And if you don't, then this, these are the judgments I'm going to bring upon. Verse 27, Say thou thus unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, As I live, surely they that are in the waste shall fall by the sword, and him that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. And they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. So basically the Lord is saying, those that are still left there remaining, obviously not every single one of them, but you're gonna, I'm going to bring judgment upon them. Whether you're in the field, whether you're in the waste cities, whether you are in the caves, you're going to get that judgment for the wickedness that you're doing. Thinking that you're going to be all good just because it's, it's your inheritance. Verse 28, for I will lay the land most desolate and the pomp of her strength shall cease, right? That pomp, meaning that, that arrogance. The Lord says he's going to bring it all down. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate and none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Lord Yahweh. When I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations, which they have committed. So due to their wickedness, the Lord is going to do this. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. So basically, the the Israelites that were there with him were, you know, talking talking about him. Like, oh, you know, because obviously he was a... Remember that the things the Lord had Ezekiel do and say, it was, it was to be a sign, okay, to these people so he was a talk the talk of the town so to speak it says here and speak one to another every one to his brother saying come i pray you and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the lord so they basically say to one another yo let's go let's go hear what what the prophet has to say what is he got to say what what's the message of the lord today and they come unto thee as the people cometh and they sit before thee as my people and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Meaning that outwardly they come, they sit, they listen, as if they, you know, like, like the Lord's people. But outwardly they, they make it seem as though, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you know, hey, hey, preach, you know, that's right, that's right. But within they still go after their covetousness, meaning that if there's still if this guy is still worshiping idols, he's gonna go back and still worship those idols. Even though he comes and hears you, he's not gonna turn back from what he's doing. He's still gonna go after what he wants. Right? If this guy is a, a professional adulterer, adulterer, he's he's going back to business. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. So they, they love to hear what you have to say, but they're not going to do it. They don't actually take it to, to heart. They don't lay it to mind to actually consider doing it. And being likened onto a lovely song is like entertainment, right? If you look at music, what section is music categorized as? Entertainment. Okay? A, a, a lovely song is one that you have on repeat. You like how it sounds. You want to keep hearing it over and over and over again. Okay? But the Lord is saying here that, uh, you know, when you prophesy, you tell them these things, they, they like the, the way you're saying it and all of that. Like a modern day example is today, you got people that will watch certain videos. If you notice, the videos that deal with, with actual learning and edification and, you know, those 
that have that have either like scriptural titles or titles that involve like education people don't really want to watch that and that's because the majority of views that you get don't really come from people that are watching because they're truly trying to be edified you can you can always experiment by putting a very clickbaity title and a clickbaity thumbnail and see how how even if you're your channel might have 500 subscribers and I'm sure depending on how how much how you know how intriguing your title and thumbnail is you'll get far more views than your subscriber count where do you think all those extra views are coming from you think all of a sudden everybody from all walks of life that is interested in in, in learning is here if that was the case then those views would remain consistent throughout all the different videos you put up but that's not the case. You, your view count goes up because people perceive that your video might be entertaining. It's, it's intriguing. Oh, what's this about? Let me click it and find out. But if it's like, repent, stop doing wickedness, who's gonna click on that? <laughs> you know, only those that are sincerely trying to be edified and, 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 and learn, but the rest would do it for entertainment. And it was the same thing back then. They come to listen, but are they actually going to turn back from their wicked ways? No, the majority of them won't. Verse 33, and when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. So when all these things, uh, now back in Ezekiel's time, all the things that he had been saying, right, by the, uh, by the, the spirit of the Lord, when those things came to pass, like how he was warning them about how Jerusalem was going to be destroyed and X, Y, and Z, then they're going to believe that, yeah, this man was truly a prophet. But in our time as well, when these prophecies that we consistently warn you about, especially these, these, you know, these, the MOTB, you know, the World War Three, the famines, when these things come to pass, then they're going to know that, that there were prophets among them, that damn, these men weren't just making things up. And that's pretty much the end of Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. Okay, so Lord willing, thou is edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Kodash. And until next time, Shalom.